Okay, great. So, um, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start. And I'm, let me just pull up my PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to go ahead and actually go off camera for a little bit because I'm going to be sharing my screen. Uh, and I want you guys to see what I'm displaying, uh, not so much me. So I'm just going to get rid of that and turn off my video, but you guys will be able to hear me. And I'm going to share my screen here, screen two. Okay. Just please let me know, give me a thumbs up or something like that. Yeah, once you guys can see my screen, that would be great. That's so funny. You guys can Look see the two birds the, there? Look at the eyes. See. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, great. Well, let's get going. Today's class is going to be on Microsoft Word. And so we're going to be talking about um, just Microsoft Word basic skills. We're going to talk about uh, what you can use Microsoft Word for. Um, and hopefully you guys get a nice orientation today. That would be the goal. Um, and uh, one of the things I would encourage you guys to do, if you have Microsoft Word at home, uh, when you have some time, uh, take some of the lessons that we're going to talk about and learn today and just practice on your own. You know, all of the things that we teach is great to be here, but you're really going to get it, um, you know, in uh, kind of the muscle memory, I'll say. Um, when you do take the time to work on these skills at home. So I highly encourage you guys to do that, okay? Um, so let me just, I'm just making sure I have access to the chat so I can see if anybody chats me here. All right. So just to warm up, um, I would love it if you guys would answer some questions here for me. And this is kind of to get our brains going. What are some of the reasons for writing a letter or writing a resume? Anybody? Y'all can feel free to put it in the chat or feel free to um, just unmute. What's some reasons to write a letter or write a resume? Any, any job that we apply for requires to write a resume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you need to write a lay resume and most of the jobs here, they will always require a cover letter. So you need both. Exactly. And you will write a resume on a Word document and I'm excited you will be talking about that. You will write a letter on the same Word document, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. For yep. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Because I mean, if if you write a letter, um, if you, what happens if you have to write multiple letters, but you want to say the same thing? Is it it's probably a lot of work uh, to write multiple letters to multiple people? In if you want to say the same thing, right? Um, you want to you know send your resume to multiple people. It would obviously be much much harder without computers if we needed to write that multiple times and then print it out and then send it to multiple people. Um, using Microsoft Word is a very easy way to write letters. You can print as many copies as you like and distribute those um, and it just makes everyone's life much easier. If you ever need to change it, you can go back and mm -hmm. edit that document. And so that gets to our next question here. Why might you wanna type a document instead of writing it by hand? I'm going to call on some people, see if I can get some people to participate with me. Um, so help me out with the names. Uh, Felagush, why might you want to type a document instead of writing it by hand? Selling yourself. I see somebody said that. Mm -hmm. Any other reasons you would want to type versus handwrite a document? So you can, um, first of all, you can save it and then you mm -hmm. can make changes and uh, it will look better. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's hard to read writing. So, um, you know, uh, whoever you're sending it to at least can understand what you're trying to say. Exactly. They can actually read your <laughs> handwriting. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, typing is definitely uh, a, a skill that is completely necessary. You don't have to be great at it. You know, sometimes, you know, I know when I started, it was just punching keys, right? You look and you punch that key and it takes a little while. But once that document is written, you have a document that you can just edit later. You can change the date on it. You can change a couple things here and there. And it's just always there. That document will live as long as you um, don't lose it in the digital worlds. And, and that's a whole other topic we'll talk about mm -hmm. a little bit today also. 
All right, great. So what are we going to be learning today? Uh, we're going to talk about how to open and close a new and existing Word document. And again, Word, just to back up a little bit, Microsoft Office um, is a software or suite of uh, software programs uh, that people use for office productivity. So things like writing letters, uh, that would be Microsoft Word. Creating a resume would be on Microsoft Word. Uh, creating a calendar even potentially, or a flyer, like the flyer that maybe you see at your church when they're promoting an event or you get them in the mail. Um, all of those can be created in Microsoft Word. Uh, they also have a program called Microsoft Excel. We're going to be starting on that next week. Microsoft Excel is used for doing formulas and doing math, adding numbers, charts, and graphs. One of my favorite programs because I'm a, a math person, a number person, and I'm a visual learner, so I really enjoy Microsoft Excel. And again, we'll be talking about that starting next week. Uh, there's also Microsoft PowerPoint, which you're looking at right now on my screen. This is a Microsoft PowerPoint slide that I created. Uh, PowerPoint is used for presentation. It's used to uh, display information to people while you're talking to them, because most people don't want to just look at you. They also want to look at some information, have some graphics maybe, have some videos uh, to break it up. And so Microsoft uh, PowerPoint is a very powerful tool for presenting information. And so we'll be talking about that in February and I'll cover the schedule at the end of the class today um, to talk about what we have upcoming in our training schedule. Uh, we'll also talk about in Microsoft Word, there's a thing called templates and this word is gonna come back up again today multiple times. A template is when you're using something that someone already made. A lot of you guys have probably heard this saying that says, you know, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What does that mean? That just means like if someone else has created it and it worked, you don't need to go recreate the wheel from scratch. Uh, and most things have been created and duty, you know, helped me uh, find some curriculums and things even for this training because it was already created. There was already a template and we're using that. Uh, it just makes sense to use templates because uh, somebody else has taken the time and that person is likely a subject matter expert and they have created something that you can just borrow from them uh, and then make it your own by just customizing some words or maybe some graphics and things like that. So templates are extremely useful. Uh, Word has templates for your resume. They have templates for letters. They have templates for uh, invoice. If you have a business and you need to invoice uh, customers, they have all types of stuff. And so we'll look at that today. And then finally, uh, we're going to just talk about recognizing the different parts of a Microsoft Word window, including the quick access toolbar, the ribbon, and we're going to show you what multiple windows would look like sometimes uh, if you're working on multiple Word documents at the same time. So that's some of the stuff that we are going to discuss today. Okay, so at this point, I'm actually going to go ahead and open up Microsoft Word for you guys. And when you open up Microsoft Word, this is what it looks like. Um, and just let's see if I can show you guys really quick with Microsoft Word. Uh, Word, and this is going to be a little bit hard to see, uh, is this down here. If you guys can see the bottom of my screen, there's a blue um, kind of a box with the W. That is for Microsoft Word, OK? Microsoft Excel is going to be green with the X. Again, Word and PowerPoint. So these are the three office tools that we primarily use in corporate America or if you work in healthcare, um, that if you haven't used them yet, you will eventually end up using these. So um, today, again, we're going to be covering Microsoft Word. Um, so just how do you open up a document in Microsoft Word? How do you open it? Uh, if it's either on your, uh, this is kind of a toolbar here at the bottom, you can just left click on your mouse to open Word that way and click new document and it'll open up a new document for you there. Uh, you can see here, I can toggle if I want it, if, maybe if I add something else on my screen over here, uh, I can make it smaller. Or if I hit the button here right next to the X, the X will close it. Uh, so if again, if we just open it up and hit new document, you can see this is our workspace here. So this is um, where we would actually work and write the information. This is our window. So a window can move around. You guys can see I'm moving this window around and you can have multiple windows open. I'm actually gonna go ahead and open a new one 
and now we have two documents. So this can be document one, and this one over here could be document two. Um, and so that is something that's extremely useful if you're multitasking and you need to work on two things. So again, uh, just to make sure we get the definition in our brains, uh, this is a window. This is a window, but we're in the same program. We're in Microsoft Word here. So I just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. We got one in the waiting room. Debris, Debris is joining us. Fantastic. Okay. So I wanna take a few minutes and just orient everyone to my screen. Um, I'm gonna, hopefully this is big enough for you guys all to see, uh, but this is Microsoft Word when you um, open up again, a brand new document. So this is your workspace here where you would say, hello, uh, this is a beautiful, see it helps you actually type there. It, once you start typing, it actually will notice some of the words. And if you don't want to complete typing that where you can hit tab, which is uh, just to the left of Q on your keyboard, and it'll finish writing that word, uh, which I think is a very, very nice feature. I'm just going to let someone in. We had someone in the uh, waiting room there. And so this is your Microsoft Word. I'm just going to make it a little bit small so we can see here. So up here uh, at the top, this is your quick access bar, this bar all the way at the top. And so I have a couple things up there. What's nice about the quick access bar is regardless of where I'm at in my document, if I wanna save it, this will always be here. So I could go and save this document right now. Uh, most folks save things either to their documents on their computer or to their desktop. I'm just gonna, and your desktop is just this background in the back. Um, so anytime you save something, there's always options and there's locations on your computer, just like you have maybe a file system at home or you have folders uh, and you file things away in folders, maybe for you know uh, the mortgage, you got a folder for bills, you have a folder for kids things. Same thing when you are saving files in your computer, uh, you can save things to your My Documents, uh, which is you know, a good place, or you can save it to desktop. Today, I'm just gonna save to desktop. The name of the document right here is hello. And you can see it's a docx. So I'm just going to hit save there. And there is my document right there. It's on my desktop. So I saved it there. And so again, just to go back to the quick to the uh, quick uh, bar, the quick toolbar at the top. Um, this is one of my favorite things, the quick access toolbar, because I can even if I uh, let's say I go here and I make this bold. And I decide, oh, you know what? I don't want that to be bold, but I don't know where it is to, un to undo that. I can just come right up here. And anytime you put your mouse on top of something, it'll actually uh, give you the option and let you know exactly what that does. So I'm gonna hit back and notice what it does. It's going to undo making that bold. So I'm gonna hit undo. How many undos can you do? I can keep undoing. See that? You can just keep undoing until you get rid of everything. Uh, so that's a really nice function. Again, I can save up here. Uh, I can uh, undo, bold. I can make my writing uh, a different color. So again, if you don't select something though, it won't work. It won't change the color. So you actually have to left click, hold down the left click button and select into gray the things that you wanna change. And then this pops up. So you can do it here. You can change the font to red. I'm just going to do it from up here. Let's make it red. There we go. Now, once this is selected, if you wanted to highlight something, you can right click on your mouse. So that's the middle finger for most of us. If you're right handed, it's going to be your right middle finger. You can right click and it gives you all kinds of different options of what you can do. You can make it bold. You can make it italics, underline. You can highlight. In this case, we're going to highlight or maybe we want to make the font bigger. This is to make the font bigger and font is just um, uh, kind of a name for how do you want your text to look. You can change the text, actually the format. So we can, let's go with Algerian. You see that it gives you option to change what it looks like. Uh, so there's different options, Arial uh, or Times New Roman, I would say are some of the more popular ones, even Calibri, if I'm saying that right. Let's go with Algerian and let's make it really big. Okay, 
again, right click and we can highlight it also. So we have a lot of options that we can do. If you ever are looking to format some text, uh, the easiest thing to do is highlight, right click, and then it's going to give you some options. And a lot of the times what you need is going to be right here in this pop-up box, okay? So this is the quick access toolbar up here. Just wanted to make sure everyone was tracking what that is. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to cover is again, this is the document area. So this is your working area. And then we have some tabs up here. So all of this up here is under each tab here, you're gonna have a lot of different options. So under file, when I left click file, and I'm really hoping not because I know I'm going a little fast here, uh, but this video is going to be posted onto the Mission Africa site uh, for you guys to review um, if you'd like on your own time also. Uh, that's one of the great resources of doing virtual is we can record this, which it is recorded, and you guys will be able to go back and review this on your own. So if you hit file, there's several options here. I can save it. I can print. I can share this with others, maybe by email or I can share with other people by sending them a link. Uh, a lot of different options that um, you know we'll cover in our next class, but I just wanted to show you what's there. So that's file under home. We see a lot of the options that we saw earlier. You can make a list right here. I'll show you what that one does. So if I hit this, I can make a list. So I can call it one and then hit enter and two and three, and I can list my ideas in order, um, idea one, right? Idea two and so forth, idea three. Uh, so that is a list. If you want to change that list, sometimes people want it to look like uh, this. You can just change it and when you tab over, it'll change it. So let's look at that, see that? So now it just changed it, and then it changed it, okay? So there's different things that you can do up here using the bullets and or the numbering. Uh, you can create a PDF and creating a PDF, uh, let's just talk briefly about that. Creating a PDF is going to allow your Word document to be essentially uneditable. Um, there are some people who have the technology and the program to edit it. But as you can see, a Microsoft Word document, you can continue to add to it. You can continue to type to it. And sometimes it, when you've created your resume and you've taken the time to make this nice, pretty document, you don't want anybody to mess it up. You want to just send it to them and you want it to stay in the form that you created it. And how do you do that? You can uh, create and share as an Adobe PDF right there. Um, and so I won't go through that now, but bottom line is, it, let me see if I have one on my desktop PDF. Um, I'll find one really quick. Here's a PDF right here. So this is a PDF that was made in a Word document. And as you can see, I can't type. It's locked, can't type anything. Uh, it's just a document, it's been saved because they don't want anybody to change it. And so that's one of the beautiful things about PDFs. And um, that's just a portable digital file. So that's what PDF stands for. And um, they are owned by the company Adobe. So if you ever see something that looks like, uh, let's move one over. If you ever see something that looks like that, it's got the uh, red kind of twisty thing and it says PDF. That's nothing but a Word document that's been um, saved in a format that is uneditable at this point, okay? Uh, so I find that to be really, really, really useful. Let's keep going through um, our different tabs here. Uh, you got insert. What does insert do? What does it sound like insert does? Insert's gonna allow you to insert a photo. So I'm gonna insert a picture, for instance. Uh, actually, let's do a stock image. And let's see what comes up. Uh, let's do a stock image of Friday. So I just put in Friday and an airplane came up. You just select it, you hit insert. There's your airplane. Now you have a airplane in your document. Uh, if you wanted to add again, go back to insert and you can insert from this device. 
And let's see if I can find me a good photo. I'll insert a photo of my family when we were out, um, you know, uh, at the mountain. Okay, great. So again, if I wanted to write a letter to my family, say, hey guys, we had such a good time out skiing with you guys. Here's the photo. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's stay in touch, et cetera, et cetera. You can just add a photo right there as long as that photo's somewhere on your computer. Okay, so that's the insert tab. Uh, you can insert a table. Okay. Let's see. You can draw. Okay. So if you wanted to draw your signature on a document, here's mine. That's my quote unquote digital signature, okay? If you wanted to highlight some things, you could highlight by choosing this. And these things are exactly what they look like. You know, you got a red pen. If you're a teacher, if you have any teachers on the call, you could say, eh, that's wrong. You can put your red line through it right there. Uh, so there's a lot of options there. And then you can also erase things. So I can go back and I can erase some of the things that I did, okay? So really fantastic tools under the drawing, if you're editing documents especially. Uh, under design, you can do some fun things like you can put in a watermark. Some, anybody ever work for the government? Um, and you see documents that are stamped confidential or worked in healthcare even potentially. And those documents um, have this kind of a faded word in the back. That's a watermark. So that's right here under design, watermark and or draft sometimes, right? You see that somebody's writing a paper and it's still in draft form. They don't want anybody to think it's the final document. So they can just put it in draft. Uh, or if you've ever worked with the government, let's do one that says, um, and I used to see these when I was in the army. Let's do top secret. Boom, top secret document. Now it's stamped, okay? It's official. So that's a couple of things that you can do under design. Over here under layout, uh, this is a fun one. You can change the orientation. Most of us, when we are working in uh, Word documents, we are actually uh, working from you know the top of the page down because we're writing a letter. But sometimes you want to actually maybe turn the page sideways. You want to uh, have it orient to what we call landscape. So let's watch what happens when I click landscape. So I just clicked orientation. Again, we're under the layout tab, orientation, and then I click landscape and see how it turned the page sideways. So it turned the page sideways now. And now I can go uh, orientation and click portrait. And it's going to go back to what we're normally used to, uh, which is reading from top to bottom. Uh, so, you know, definitely if you have Word at home, feel free to play around with your layout. You can do some really fun things in there. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have that we want to talk about. Review. Uh, this is one you may or may not use a lot. Uh, what's nice about review is uh, if you misspell some words, uh, let's say, I'm going to zoom back in so you guys can see. So let's say you spelled uh, hyperbole, hyperbole, and you misspelled it, okay? Uh, first of all, it's going to give you that red line, that red squiggly line under there to tell you, hey, you didn't do something right. Got it. But what does that mean? How do you fix that? There's a couple ways to do it. Normally, if you get that red squiggly line, it's telling you, hey, that doesn't look like a real word. Can you check that spelling again? And again, highlight, right click, and it's going to say, did you mean to spell hyperbole as an exaggeration or an overstatement? or hyperbola or hyperboles. So it gives you a couple of different options. So I'm gonna say, oh, I meant to sp spell hyperbole. There you go, you just select hyperbole and it fixes it for you. So that's a really nice feature um, when you're typing a long letter, especially an official email or an official letter, it's really embarrassing to have uh, typos and things misspelled. So that's definitely a function I like to use a lot is the spelling and the grammar. So that's your different tabs at the top that I wanted to go through. And this can be look a little bit different depending on your version of Microsoft Word, but generally speaking, that's what it's gonna look like. I wanna go ahead and uh, actually take off my watermark here. Okay, let me get rid of the photo. 
Okay. There we go. So the, again, we're back to our working area where we can type now. Let's see, so that is the tabs. We went over the quick access toolbar. Um, here, uh, this area that you saw me working in here in the middle, this is the ribbon, R-I-B-B-O-N. And again, that's where just a lot of the really quick options, things that you use a lot are gonna be located here. So again, as you tab over, the ribbon changes. So when you go to the home tab, this is your ribbon. When you go to the insert tab, this is your ribbon, okay? All right, so uh, let's go and just look at our PowerPoint one more time. So can anybody tell me what is this section up here called? The section at the top, all the way at the top. I'll give you a couple options. Is it the ribbon, the window, the tab, or the quick access toolbar? This part all the way at the top. this here. What do we call that? Anybody, feel free to unmute. Or you can chat it. Quick access to uh... mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Good job, John Paul. Uh, how about this line here? Home, insert, draw. Is that the ribbon? That the tabs or the window? That's the ribbon. Is this is your tabs. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. You're good. You'll need you're to good. unlock your iPhone first. So this is your tabs, but as you change your tabs, you get a different ribbon. The ribbon yeah, is the okay. bigger section right here at the top. Okay. So if you're ever working and you just need to find something, feel free to click through the different tabs and you're going to get your ribbon. If I click this button up here, right next to the X, so what does the X do? That closes our document. What is the, and I didn't cover this, this uh, little kind of underscore here. If you hit that, it'll actually shrink your document. Uh, so let's say you want to work on something on the internet. You don't want to work on the Word document anymore. You can always click click the uh, underscore there and it'll actually shrink your document. And if you hit the uh, box here, it'll make your document take up the entire page. Okay, so that's a couple of parts of the Microsoft Word window that I wanted to cover with you guys. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, and then lastly, let me just go through and show you guys a quick review. And we just talked about this. So the quick access toolbars at the top, very, very, very top. You can actually modify that guys if you wanted to add things to it. Let me uh, pull that up one second. So if you wanted to add some things to your quick access toolbar up here, you can just select here. And anything that's unchecked, you can actually add. If it's checked, as you can see here, we have a check mark next to save. So that's why the save is there. We have a check mark next to print preview. That's why uh, this is print preview right here. Undo, we have a check mark next to it. It's right there. So if I wanted to add um, new, Add that, and let's say I wanted to add email. So I see it added an icon for email, added an icon for new. So that's how we would add new things. Again, you only wanna put the things up here that you need a lot. So no matter where you're at in the ribbon or on any of the other toolbars, you can always access these here at the top. Okay, and then of course we have our tabs as in duty described to us. And then lastly, we have the ribbon. And again, the ribbon, will change as you are working through the different tabs. Okay, so who can tell me, I'm gonna go back to my screen here. So I have a couple of documents here on my desktop. How would I open this document right here? How would I open that? Double click. Uh, double click, right click, double right click, or double left click? Double left click. Double left click, yep. So that's for most of us, that is going to be our pointer finger. Uh, so let me pull that up. I'm just gonna turn on my screen really quick so you guys can see me. Pointer finger, right? So we got these fingers. This is my mouse. For me, uh, uh, a left click is my pointer finger. 
and a right click is going to be my middle finger. So my pointer finger is always going to be my double click. So when I double click that document, one, two, and you have to do it pretty quick. If you do it slow, it won't work. So let me do it slow and let's see what happens. I'm going to do one, two, nothing. I'm going to do a little faster. One, two, still not fast enough. So let's try a quick double click. One, two, there we go. So now you have your document up and uh, that is how you open a document. How do you close the document? Uh, this button here, this button, or this one on the far right? This one over here on the far right, of course. And again, if we have multiple open, we have two of them open, what do we call that? If we have two documents open, we call these windows. Windows. Yep, so you got window one and you got window two. So you're working in multiple windows because sometimes when you're working on multiple things, they'll say, oh, you know, minimize all those windows. I can't see what you're working on. You got too much going on. And you can just come here, minimize, minimize, and then you can see your desktop and figure out what you want to do, okay? So I just want to make sure we covered those things. Let's see. Okay, now, we, now we're going to spend some time talking about templates. At the beginning of the presentation, we talked about um, using templates because sometimes you don't want to recreate something. Sometimes you just want to be able to go and find something that somebody else has already created, and you want to be able to just grab that thing and change it. Who hears about efficiency? I know in duty probably is like, I'm not recreating something just to recreate it. We're going to recreate things uh, if we have to, but if we don't have to, we would like to, you know, probably use something that someone else has already done. And so, again, to open up Word, I'm just going to open up Word again. I'm actually going to close out everything that I've got here so far. And let's start fresh. So, again, open up Microsoft Word. And now, instead of going to blank, see that there's some options here. See these options? Got an option for a accounting resume, a chronological resume, a newsletter, a calendar, a bold modern resume, a letter to professional, uh, a letter to professor requesting a job recommendation. That's a good one. Let's take a look at that one. How do you actually open it? And these are called templates, by the way. So you just click that template and just hit create. And there you go. It, it's giving you, mm -hmm. it's giving you um, the template. All you have to do is change the information, right? It's giving you everything. This is already a professional looking document. You don't have to do much to it. Um, it's, you know, dear recipient name. I have applied for an entry level position as a job title. So you just need to change the things that are in gray here. Uh, I've applied to be a data analyst at Amazon and I'm in need of a recommendation. I would be honored if you would write me, write one for me. Your course, um, Microsoft Word 101, was one of my favorite classes in college, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then again, you can go sincerely, put your name. And then again, just to recap, if you wanted to be fun with it, you could come here and you could grab a blue pen and you could sign your name. It's hard to sign your name digitally, I admit, <laughs> but uh, it's pretty cool. And then you can, of course, print this out. You can send this uh, electronically through your email that you have. So this is a great example of a use of a template. Like templates are the best because they're just going to save you so much time. And it's already done. Let's look at what other templates there are out there. This is one of my favorites, uh, a calendar. Some of us have all these digital calendars and you still miss meetings. I know I'm sometimes like, where am I supposed to be? What's going on? And I have like, I have kids and sometimes I want to put up like a chore chart for them, but they don't have a digital. Jean Paul needs one of these. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this is wonderful because you Thank can just you so much. Here. I really and... need it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here you go. Microsoft Word is where it's at. Uh, so you can come here. Go to calendar. Uh, let's see here. One second. I'm getting, uh, there we go.
imagine that I had to remember. Um, so Pastor chose me, told me to remember her about a, a, a schedule. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, she was the one to remember me that I had to remember her about that. <laughs> Ah, okay. I Your see role was here. to remind me this. I was like, "That's true." So I was reminded to be remind to be able to remind her that I had to remind her that. Like, crazy. I love it. I love it. Reminding all everybody of what's mm -hmm. going on. Uh, so that that's a good one though. So you have a calendar. I, I like that one. Uh, you have a resume. Let's look at that one. Click on resume. Let's click create. And again, you just fixed your name here, add your phone number, add your experience in education. We just did this with uh, one of our learners on Tuesday night. Uh, we actually helped her create a resume. She was applying for a new job and she came in and said, I need a resume. And so we, we sat down and in about 20 minutes, we were able to produce a brand new resume for her. Uh, and it was fantastic. She was able to take That's that awesome. resume, a very professional looking resume and take that into her prospective employer and say, here you go. Here's a list of my qualifications. Um, it had her phone number, her email, just very professional. And so I was really proud of that. So feel free to use any of these templates that you guys see in Word when you open them. If you're looking to do something before you go create something, I just highly recommend it. You come in here and you see if there's a template for it already. Uh, again, if you own a business, this is so easy. Invoice. You don't have to make an invoice. Just take one that somebody else has already made, put your company name, do your yeah. thing, and then add, add up your money, right? Uh, I remember, sorry, Eric, I remember go, when, we did the, when we did the AHA project and we needed a uh -huh. voice from the community leaders so we can pay them. And everybody was calling me, how do you do invoice? <laughs> right? How do we do invoice? <laughs> I've never done invoice. Uh, and, you know, it was crazy. But anyway, oh, yeah. it's right there in front of us. Exactly. We just have to go and we have to look. It's mm -hmm. right there. I love this one right here. Uh, we just had another, um, it says Be Betel Ham Adela. Welcome to our call. And so this is a certificate of achievement. Again, so if you wanted to just print out a certificate of achievement, you're doing some type of training. Uh, I think that's a very useful one. And then, uh, you know, if you're looking for a particular one, you can just come here. Let's look at flyers. Again, these are templates, templates. So you'll see these all the time. Let's say there's a baptism and you want to invite people to a baptism. Look at that. This is so easy. This is exciting for me. I don't know about you guys. I'm getting excited just going through it myself because I'm just thinking of the amount of time I can save, but it looks so professional and sharp. Uh, and once you uh, get what you have, you know, let, let's say you update and say, please join us for this baptism of, uh, let's, let's say Jeremiah. Okay, and uh, you've got the date and everything here. And all you have to do once you have it all done is you go again to file and you hit save and you can tell it on this PC. Most people are just going to browse. You just hit browse right there and then find where you want to save it at. Most people typically on your desktop is fine. And we can call it, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, baptism. Uh, baptism. Baptism invite. And again, it's a Word document. Uh, if you wanted to, you could change it and you could save it as a PDF from here. But normally what you want to do, because you might want to come back and change this document, is you can save it as a Word document here on the desktop. So I just save that. And then let's see if we can find it. Just going to close out some of these other ones we had. And it is right here. So there's baptism invite. So if I wanted to go back in and say, oh, I, we changed the time of the party. Just go back in there, double click it, come on down here and say, uh, actually, this one, we're going to do it on August 14th now. And we're not going to do it at 123 Main Street. We're going to do it at 321 Main Street. Okay. 
very easy stuff. Uh, and again, this would take some time to recreate this. Like somebody took the time to create this really nice flyer. Just use what's available to you guys. Uh, it's going to make your life easier and it's going to make you look really good. People are going to be impressed with your skills. Like, oh my goodness, did you oh, see what Duty wow. did? She made this amazing flyer. She's amazing. <laughs> She's going to be our new flyer maker. She's going to do all the flyers. <laughs> and then you're not going to tell them your secret. You're going to come in here next time you need to make a flyer. You're going to go to flyers and you can say, okay, which one are we going to impress them with next? We're, let's do a dog walking one. Right. And now you have a dog walker flyer. So it, you just have a lot of fun with it. Microsoft Word is a uh, fantastic tool for using templates, especially because it's just going to save you a lot of time and it's just going to make you look really, really good. So I just wanted to cover that and take a look at my lesson plan and see what else we have. Um, I'm curious what templates you guys saw uh, here. When I opened up the document, did you see any templates you might use uh, under education? We have a student report with a photo, education brochure, volunteer form, public speaking peer review. Uh, has anybody ever used any of these templates and uh, or there's some that you think you might use down the road? I used to do uh, Mission Africa flyers on, on the template, the newsletter. There you go. Before we mm -hmm. went digital, we used to just, you know, use the template mm -hmm. and put the information there and use mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, what about, so that's education. Uh, anyone done under business? Anyone done any, uh, you know, uh, this is a really nice one, a, a professional yes, business plan. Yes. I use it a lot from there. I use mm -hmm. many of them, like sometimes just to get the uh, cover out of front exactly. page of a document. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I've done like business like cards it. too. I've used oh, yeah. for business card. Oh yeah, that's label. a big one right there. Yeah. Business business cards and labels. This mm -hmm. is one of the best things you can buy a pack of sticky labels if you do a lot of mailing. Yep. And then you can come in here and you can just grab one and, you know, you type it one time. Um, mm -hmm. And notice that it, uh, let me just zoom in so y'all can see that. I typed yeah. it one time, but notice that it updated on all of these. Oh, so wow. one, once you make it, once you make it one time, mm. all the other labels are automatically done. Let's say I wanted to add a logo right there. Um, uh let's see let's go over and go to photos this is so and good eric thank you thank you you can add photos and just copy and paste and you can have multiple copies of that um so the bottom line is guys you just got to play around just play around there's so much available in here um if you do not have access to microsoft word you can typically access it through your uh, local library uh, on the computers there, or feel free to stop by Mission Africa. I know uh, Ms. Duty, who's our executive director, uh, is looking to get uh, kind of a full-time staff member at the Mission Africa office in Federal Way uh, so that people can drop in and use uh, some of the resources we have there, the computers, the internet. Um, but we also have a, the classes again on Tuesday at 6 and on Saturdays at one o'clock. And we normally reserve about a half an hour to an hour at the end of the training, like we are today. Uh, at the end of that training, we leave some time open for folks to just use the computer, take assessments and do whatever they like. So um, again, a lot of this is gonna come from you just getting in here, playing around, having fun with it and, and just being creative. And um, you're gonna learn some skills while you're having some fun. That's the best part about it, if you ask me, is you learn while you're having fun. One of the people also um, the advertising advertisement mm -hmm. that like uh, I put out there mm -hmm. I told them like they need to learn you know one of the requirements to get in the position is to take the training and complete the certificate for North South mm -hmm. because we, we really need these skills and so. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, no, like it's, the, it's uh, I say no, it's not about. Uh, it's just about checking. You know, to get registered and get all these certificates. We need to see them on your resume because it's a part that's of right. That you'll be doing. That's exactly right, and that that's is our goal is to get these certificates done, so that people um, can get these things on their resume. So. Once we're done with Microsoft Word, and I believe we have, let me look at my schedule, uh, one or two more sessions on Microsoft Word. Today's class was more about some of the basics of Microsoft Word. Our next class will go into a little bit more of an intermediate, and we'll actually, uh, our goal by the end of our Microsoft Word training is that you have a resume that you can take away that's mm. professional looking, it has all of your information on it, it's accurate, it's up to date, uh, and we will get that to you in a Word document that you can edit uh, later down the road if you need to add more experience or more education as you develop. But once you create a resume, it's a living document. You just continue to add to it. You know, you get more certificates with us. You get a PowerPoint certificate, put that on your resume. Uh, you know, you worked a job uh, somewhere and you learned some new skills. You want to put those new skills in your resume. So uh, the resume is just a live document. And so, again, our goal is that by the end of our Word training, which is going to be uh, throughout the month of February, we'll finish up Microsoft Word. And uh, our, again, my goal personally is to make sure that each one of you guys uh, that attends the class comes out with a nice, clean resume, uh, something you can take away. And then uh, we'll give you a PDF version also that you can email around to prospective employers. Okay, let me get ready to wrap up here. It's uh, 6.55. Just to wrap up here, so who can tell me which picture here shows opening a template? A. This is A, I'll give you a second to look at it. B. Okay, so again, A, and we're, we're asking which one is opening a template, B or C? Oh, uh, you went on mute again at duty. <laughs> no, I'm saying let's other people contribute. Yes, I'm yes. I'm learning Lu something. It's not only me and Jean Paul that are in this. I see. Uh, I see. Lucy said C. Who else? Who else? Yay. What do you think? I think Lucy got it. Yes, very <laughs> nice. Good job, Lucy. So everybody that's participated can't answer anymore. The next one is which picture shows someone opening a blank document? A or B? Anybody else that hasn't participated? You can feel free to type it or unmute. And I'm going to wait. Gracia. There we go. A, good job. Good blank job, Gracia. Yep. So open up Word, hit blank document, and start typing on your way. There you go. And then, of course, the last one. Uh, again, anyone who has not uh, spoken up quite yet, which picture shows opening an existing document? A. B, here's your clue right here, <laughs> or C, B, Gracia, uh, oh yeah, and Flor, uh, Floribeto, yes, there we go, B, yeah, exactly, and so uh, here, in this case, you have recent documents, and these are all recent documents. So this individual has had a tax document, a marketing plan, something to do with softball. And so that is one of the nice features in Microsoft Office is you don't always have to remember where you saved it. If you go to File and hit Open, in Recent Documents, any recent Word document you've worked on will all be listed there. So I'll show you guys uh, what mine looks like, and you're going to see all the things I've been working on. So here... You can see a blank document, but if I go to open and it shows me recent documents. So we got the baptism invite, the hello, sample letter, digital navigation outline. Uh, this is the resume we worked on with Ann, Annie the other day. Uh, so that's on my computer. So everything is here um, and it goes all the way back to, how far does this go? This goes back to May. So look at this. I was uh, working on a fraud schedule and on May 31st, so I can go all the way back to May 31st and see what I was working on. And it's so easy to just pull that right back up and open that up and continue on my way. Uh, so just some really, really fantastic features that I wanted to share with you guys. So that's Microsoft Word 
orientation. And that's our class for today. So I hope that that was helpful for you guys. Uh, again, uh, let me pull.